All right, guys, so this is the Fusion. Um, so I had an issue with it. When I turned the heat press on, you see how it starts to load up the screen. Give it a second. It comes on. All right, so then now we're saying it's heating at 350 um, degrees for, and it'll be warm in 20 minutes. So that's as far as it go. It was not warming up at all. So we actually called the company and then... Stole. Yes, and then um, they had Paul open this up. So I'm going to show you right now how he opened it up and they had him test it to see what was wrong with it. So I'm going to show you guys how they did that. So we contacted Stalls and the company was very helpful in trying to um, find out the problem with what it was. I had to put a multi-reader uh, to figure out, you know, what if, if we were, if certain parts of the machine was generating heat or not. And so I have to turn this off in order to start, but I did that and certain parts of the motherboard wasn't, it wasn't, um, the ohms on the multi-reader wasn't really high as it should have been, so they sent me a new piece. But in order to open this, you have to put like a little pin here on either side, push a little firm, be firm with it, don't be scared to, to push it in because it won't pop out. And this is the motherboard here. So what they had us do, okay. what they had us do was test these two bottom pins here. Which ones? These right here, these pins here. Okay. I had to test these two pins here, not the top one. The first one, you'll see that it looks similar to this, but it doesn't have any pins. And these were the ones that we had to check with the multi-reader. We checked these two pins, and then we had to check this square pin here and this pin at the end. This side of the board was generating enough ohms. This side wasn't. So they decided to send us this apart, which they were pretty quick in doing. Yeah, we had to pay to have it overnighted because I have so many orders that um, I, can't, I couldn't be a couple of days without the heat press. So they would not pay to overnight it. They would have shipped it for free, but not overnight. But overnight from um, Pennsylvania, right, to right. Jersey was 26 bucks. Almost by Pittsburgh. I don't see any instructions. So the new, which is the new one? Um, this is a new one. It has... The motherboard, which which is, stays in place, and then this part, which we just took out. And that part alone, they said, would it cost us um, how much? Six hundred. Uh, six hundred over six hundred twenty-five dollars. Just for that piece, we did get just it for, for this free. Piece. I haven't had the heat press. Not for free because we had it on the warranty still. Yeah, for the warranty, but we didn't have to pay. Right. So <laughs> it's for free. Um, so um, I had this heat press now for maybe about six or seven months and I was devastated when it stopped working. Um, this was supposed to come with instructions but I don't even see that it has any. It doesn't have any. Where's the so what we're gonna use is my tools um, for my Rokoma. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be using to try to fix our um, stores heat press. Yeah, just unplug in it. Just in case. Yeah. There's no electric. And I was really upset because you guys um, know that this is not a cheap heat press. So for it to have already nah, went out heavy, on me. It's heavy too. Yeah, it's heavy. For it to have went out on me within six months, like I was really upset. And then we had to, what I ended up using while he's doing that, I ended up using um, the Cricut heat press, but it's not the best, uh, maybe for little projects, For but yeah, it was taking me forever. So I did use this 
the couple of days I think it was like two for two days before I left to Puerto Rico but as soon as we came back we called the company um, the very next day after getting back about this heat press take this out uh, there's a lot of plugging and unplugging to do so take a picture that's what I'm gonna do and then that way we know we're putting it back the same I'm gonna start plugging them in one for one as I'm taking them out that's way this way it makes it easier this right here I'm figuring is a ground because it was up in the upper right corner. Yeah, so we're taking these wires out. They're in there kind of slug too. Is they're tight in there? Yeah. Eso no lo va a picar, ¿verdad? No, this is just... Damn. This is kind of... Now, when I'm, I'm trying to be careful because I'm not trying to put any metal... Especially on this new board, have any metal touching touching that? Because I've watched videos, other videos on YouTube, where they, they say you have to put with gloves and static and this and that. So I don't know. I took a photo on my phone just to be play it safe. So we're gonna start putting everything back. This is the red. The red one goes first up in the upper left corner. The red. Then the black. Red, black. And then there's a white, this should be a white one. All right, here's the white one right here. So it's red, black, and white. Click then. We're good. Okay, then we're going to go with, um, When I come when, down, I'll make you something to eat, Mengi. Okay. When I was taking it apart, I noticed that certain, the way everything is wired, you might want to put certain wires on first. That way, before we put these on, you have a little room here to move this around. Because once you put this in, it's going to limit the movement. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start with this wire, the three prong. It has to go on the last two pins here. There's two pins right here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins there. These gotta be on the last two. Let me make a double check. <clears throat> I'm checking because there's two little grooves here. See these two grooves? So obviously in my picture I don't see them. That means it was put in the way I'm, I'm, I want to put it in. So I just want to do everything exactly the way it was on the other board.
and be mindful of the pins because these things are delicate. You don't want to just push it right in. You take your time doing it and look to make sure that the pins are lined up with the holes before you start pushing on it and then possibly bend one of the pins. All right, so now we're gonna go with this wire. Yes. All right. So this wire is gonna go right next to this one. And facing this way so this clip here you're gonna see there's a slot here and on where they're supposed to go up there's a little piece of plastic that goes into that slot so you can line, make sure you have it lined up correctly see that see the slot now you, it goes right in and it locks on All right, so we're gonna go to the next one. Which is the, the black, green, white, and red wire. The black, black, green, red, and white. Again, it has a clip and it has a, a, a slot. It has its place where it goes so you can see make sure that you know, you know you're putting it in the right location oh before we put you see no i think yeah that's it all right put this in there you're ashy yeah i have work in my hands so i'm not worried about it <laughs> <laughs> I think it was this way. See, it won't let it go in if you put it the wrong way. See that? It won't let me go put it in. Now I turn it around. Then it goes on. <laughs> All right. The yellow and green wire, the black, and the white. Damn, I should have marked these two. Like the wires? One of the wires. Oh. <clears throat> the red, the black, and the white. I mean the black, the white, and the yellow. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. This one is marked with a green tape. So this is the first one. And this one looks like this goes to the second one and this to the third. But I should have marked this one of these two because they're both the same. That's when I have to use this because I can't get my fingers in there. It's too tight. Yeah. Let me see. There we go. And 
You gotta knead them those pliers. Again, just try to do everything with your hands. Don't try to do it with the the pliers and then have it um, brushing up on anything on any of these uh, pins and stuff. But we're in there. Yeah, so when you're putting it back in, you don't want to put put them too tight. You want to be able to get the board in there first. Just give it a few twists. That way you can get everything in evening. Got this guy in. Secure. You don't have to crank it and do it, so do it really hard. That's it. Once you feel the, the screw stop, don't keep cranking it. If I work my magic. All right, we're gonna plug everything back in. They did, they sent us a, a thermostat just in case if it was a thermostat and it wasn't the board, just to be safe. Let's see what happens. We're, we may have to give it some time to heat up. I don't know how we, we didn't see that before on the screen. Yes, it, it, this was popping up and then it will go to the temperature and then it will say, what is saying now, 20 minutes remaining for it to be fully heated. So let's see now if it um, if it heats up. And for those who used to have this heat press, you know the minute that you put that switch on button, it heats up immediately. So I'm praying because I have tons of orders that I have to do, guys. I'm not joking. I have like 60 orders. It's Christmas. Now. Okay, so in order to gain access, we changed the um, the board and the motherboard and the screen, and it's not still not working since they sent us a thermostat. This is a thermostat here, and we didn't get we didn't receive any instructions for it, so I just googled some stuff, and I think I figured it out. But in order for me to gain access, I'm gonna have to move, remove this handle, which I already did this side already. I took the two screws out so I can lift this up and then I'm going to have to do the other side as well. So after we do the other side, then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step I'm going to do, which is going to be taking a bolt from under here and then on the other side as well. All right. So now he's going to remove that and then we'll be back. Now, we never received the, uh, the instructions with this, right? It's Friday. Um... I changed the motherboard and with everything. I have it out right now because I'm trying, I was trying to see if I could untighten those um, bolts that hold this plate up and it's not working. I'm gonna have to go through a bunch of crap to do it. So I looked online and I found um, some instructions um, from, from the company, from this company here. Hotronics, okay, which is uh, obviously a product of stalls. Um, so this is this is the amount of space I have to work with, and I have big fingers. So just imagine, this is one of my this is one of my fingers. So I had to go to the hardware store and find a flat ratchet, and then find the right. Phillips head that I can put in there to get it out. But this is what I have to do in order to get out. I have to work in this little space. So this is going to take some patience if you guys have to um, change the thermostat. See, I have my both, both my Nebo lights in there. This one is propping up the cover. And then I have a ribbon, it's a ribbon um, holder there and this is what I purchased from the hardware store to see this didn't work so if you see one of these don't even bother but yeah hopefully it'll turn on <laughs> after I'm done 
Okay, guys, so, um, rewind to the beginning of the video, and I had stated that we had received these because we were under the impression that it was this. It was because I had a multi reader, and I did the diagnosis, which they told me to do over the phone, and the two prong on the bottom of this board and then the two, the square and the, the pin on the end. I did it and the gentleman on the phone told me that it must have, it might have been the, um, the motherboard and, and the screen because it wasn't, it wasn't generating enough power on a multi-reader or the ohms weren't um, up at where they were supposed to be. Nevertheless, um, I told him in conversation that I would like the thermostat to be set as well even though he didn't think it was a thermostat and lo and behold, this last clip that I showed you that this was open, I only put two screws in to hold it just in case I needed to reopen it again. But lo and behold, it was the thermostat that was a problem. And you only have this amount of limited amount of space to work with. So um, this is it. Um, I mean, I mean, it, we didn't do step by step by step, but. With these clips, hopefully you guys will get the idea of what has to be done. I had, if you noticed in the last clip, this handle wasn't on because I thought I would have, I would take this handle off. This wasn't on because I thought I could disconnect something in here to make this plate drop lower. And once I noticed what was gonna, you know, what it, it entailed to take all that apart just to have this drop to change the thermostat, which is on this side here. I was like, you know what, I'm not going to go through all that because I don't want to screw up the machine. So I just worked with that limited amount of space. Um, I use this. Hold up one sec. I use this ratchet here. Um, I got this from my mechanic, believe it or not. Okay. And the right size Phillips head because I was using one that was larger and it wasn't turning the nut at all and I didn't want to, um, um, I didn't want to, um, how do you say it, screw the, uh, the screw up. So I got a smaller one, it worked. I had to stick some, to um, some <clears throat> brown paper bag in here to hold it, but what I did was to start it, I use it, I use these needle nose vice grip pliers, hold on to it like so, and Little by little, took one screw out and then worked out the rest. So that's it, folks. You guys have a blessed day.